so I thought I'd just do a quick video of my engine test stand um, so I've just finished building a new motor and I with the help of a friend we made this stand to accommodate engines and we've got this so the way we've mounted it is we've used this old 915 bell housing to mount a starter motor and just welded that to this half stand at the back and then we have this other half stand at the rear which sort of that's where you sort of mount the uh, the bolts for the engine brace and in the middle that's we just join it with a bolt and a couple of spaces so the oil tanks just on a little stand off to the side it's connected up as it would be in a car oil lines are here and for electrics which I honestly don't know very much about them but this particular one's a 3.2 so I've mounted the ECU the altimeter and the DME relay I've got the cover off the relay so I can see them both switching when they're supposed to I've mounted a gauge which shows me oil temperature and oil pressure and I've got a couple of wideband controllers I've got two sensors here at the moment I've got this AEM wideband controller which is at the moment connected to the tailpipe and I've also got this another Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor mounted in the exhaust here, which is connected to this newish kind of a controller from a company called Raytech, uh, made in Australia. Interestingly, though, I am getting two different readings. So, which one you believe, who knows? So, on this one, I don't have a taco connected, but I'm just using my timing light here. On number one so that, that'll give me a pretty good um, rpm signal and what else ignition coil on the back i've got a little fuel cell down the bottom there with a pump and a filter and some adapters so that's hooked up into the main fuel line the fuel line to the 3.2s had to be rebuilt because the hose was perished um, in terms of connections i'll try to explain it as best i can uh, from the 3.2 there are a few harnesses that come off it there is a long cable with an eye terminal on the end of it which is designed to go directly to the battery so that goes straight to the to the DME harness over here this comes out here and I've got that connected I'm using the starter post on the starter as the positive terminal um, there's also these four wires that come out of the ECU harness. You've got a yellow, a black violet, a thin black, and a large black. So the thick black one here is ECU, so that needs to be fed 12 volts, um, which is so that's that gets connected to a switched 12 volts. And in this case, I just have it connected to um, a switch here, which is just hooked up to the battery. So when I turn that on, my ECU goes on. You'll probably see the relay if I do the switch. Oh, hang on, I haven't got my earth terminal on. I'll just put my earth terminal back on. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the relay. So there's two relays in here. This one's for the, the one on the outside's for the fuel pump. The one on the inside powers the ECU. So I'll just turn the switch. See that toggle in? All right, so that's... That's when it gets 12 volts from this red wire. Uh, sorry, from, from the thick black wire on the ECU. I just happen to have a red wire coming out of my cat connector. The thin black wire is an upshift connector. So on 3.2s, I believe they have an upshift light. So in conversions, we, we're probably not going to use that unless you've actually got an upshift indicator. I don't think anyone cares. Uh, the This one here, so there's like a black violet stripe wire that's the taco light and then there's a yellow wire which comes out of the harness here and that's for the starter so that gets connected to the solenoid so you know the yellow wire that goes to your starter motor um, that's that gets connected there now to, to simulate a key I'm using just a remote starter. I don't have a key switch. I'm just using a remote starter, which and all that does is it bridges between the positive terminal 
of you can see the red plastic boot so that's the positive terminal of the starter and the black one I've got connected under that mess I've got it clipped onto the uh, the solenoid terminal so that's the one term underneath there you can see the alligator clip you can see the yellow wire there that's that's where your yellow wire in your harness gets connected to on the, on the starter motor uh, there is the coil itself there's a harness that comes out of the the, uh, the the Motronic harness which goes to the coil okay so you get your power and your ground and that gets connected directly to switch 12 volts as well okay um, I'm not sure exactly where it is in my harness it'll be somewhere around here but yeah that comes out of the harness so the coil wire. So this is the this is the DME harness here, and it branches out. And there's two wires that come out. There's one for the fuel pump, like a red and green wire. Oh, it won't focus, of course. Why would it? So this one goes to the fuel pump. That's directly to the fuel pump. That's that's from the relay, and the black one here, which also comes out of this little harness, this sub harness. That's the one that goes straight to the coil, so that needs 12 volts as well. All right, so I think that kind of explains everything. So the idea is that the fuel pump's controlled by the ECU, and it doesn't start pumping until you engage the starter motor. It's a bit of a shame because it means that you don't have enough fuel pressure there to fire. But so the idea is that once you turn the key, or in this case, I'm going to push that switch it will activate the fuel pump relay here and the engine should fire so let's the engine's cold so i'm just going to turn on the uh i'll turn on the gauges that just gives me power to the gauges so that i know that they're they're working um what am i missing i feel like i haven't connected my blue wire here that's got to go, that blue wire is just my alternator light, so when it starts to charge, the light, the, where is it, the battery light there will go out, so if it's disconnected it won't be on, so now it's got 12 volts, and then when the alternator starts to charge, that, will, that bottom light will go out, and as you see my oil pressure idiot light is connected, all right, so gauges are on. I'll turn the coil on, which would normally get switched 12 volts when you turn the key to ignition. Turn the ECU on. ECU relay engaged. And all that's left to do now is turn the key. Now it's cold and I think my idle control valve is a little bit dicky, so it might be a little bit rough to start. So the idea is when I push this, it should start the fuel pump and of course the starter motor and of course, once the engine does start, the ECU will keep the pump running until such time as the engine is turned off and then the ECU will turn the pump off.
it is. So hopefully that may or may not help someone out there, who knows.